FAA now banning solo overnight shifts. A change former air traffic controller and author of Secrets from the Tower, Bob Richards, has long been calling for. You gotta talk to the airplane. You gotta figure out how to get him where he goes. You gotta deduce the problem. For one guy to do that is insane. Life and death pressure like that can come at a price. Back when Richards was on the job in the 80s and 90s, it drove some controllers, even him for a time, to substance abuse. I got hooked on Vicodins. You rationalize that, thinking that this is going to make you better. This will make me a better at what I do. Is this part of the culture of the control tower? It's part of any culture of any type of job. It happens like with everybody else in society who've experienced success and power and ego and everything else. They get used to it, and it's like, I got I to gotta have that. Controllers hopped up on pills, a scary thought, especially in a job that takes intense concentration. If you don't stay on top of these airplanes, they're going to gobble you up. American 583 heavy, clear to take off. On my two flat right, clear for takeoff. It's not easy juggling planes. United 24 heavy, clear for takeoff. United 24 heavy, clear for takeoff. As I witnessed firsthand, hooked to a simulator at Embry Riddle Aeronautical University, training the next generation of air traffic controllers. Clearly, I will not be among them. Now, you realize, all of a sudden, you realize that. I've done the wrong United, thing. So, Tell United 860, go around. United 860, go around. That was probably as close as you ever want to get right there. That would be some paperwork. Yeah, uh, that'd be probably, they'd take you downstairs and talk to you a little bit. Are you aware you got two airplanes headed towards one another? Yes, I'm aware. You're going to get ready to turn one of them? As soon as I put that jet link between them. Rage. It's a wild world captured in the movie Pushing Tin. Controllers out of control. A reputation not helped by this incident at JFK a few years ago. Jet Blue 171, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, Jet Blue 171. You're right, that's not the voice of a controller behind the mic. That's the controller's son, actually allowing children to relay instructions to aircraft. Jet Blue 171, contact departure. Over to departure, Jet Blue 171, awesome job. Pilots may have been amused, but the FAA was not. The controller suspended for 45 days and has since retired. And with my kids, it wasn't any different. So you can't come down too hard on the guys at JFK because you did it yourself. I probably might have let my son say something, maybe at, at 2 in the morning or something. Even after a plane lands safely, the controller's job is not done. They guide jets to the gate. Last April at New York's Kennedy Airport, the wing of a giant Air France Airbus A380 clips the tail of a commuter jet, spinning the baby plane like a pinwheel. And sometimes there are threats no one could predict. That's a vehicle, and uh, he's, uh, he's high speed away. Runway rage at Philadelphia International Airport this March. Do we got a rogue vehicle driving around on the airport? That's not a jet, it's a Jeep. He drove right through a security fence. That's a huge caution. He is heading y'all's direction right now. He's on runway 9 or left. The cars are chasing him. And the controllers have to stop jets on approach from landing on top of the Jeep, waving off airliners at the last second. He's got a target on the runway. Go around. Roger, going around. A day in the tower, one old air traffic controller is glad he missed. Do you miss it? Do you miss the adrenaline? I do miss it, but I'm, I'm starting to make less trips to the cardiologist now, so it's, it's worked out for me that way. Next, just plain crazy in love. <laughs> From marriage proposals on board to rescue boats after Sully's crash landing in the Hudson. Did you ever think about that cute lady you've seen earlier in the day? I was a little more concerned about staying alive and staying alive. Travis 20 continues with Love is in the Air. Oh my God. For all the bad tempers, bad leg room, and bad food you see on airplanes, there is one soaring upside. Love is in the air. Yes, love is in the air. And no perverts, we're not talking about the kind of love from bridesmaids. Hey, not Air Marshal John, you want to get back in that restroom and not rest? I think the best place to find love is on an airplane or even at an airport. You've already heard flight attendant Heather Poole talk about her nightmare passengers, but one turned out to be her dream and husband. 
Of the hundreds and hundreds of passengers she saw every day, he stood out for one reason. He came on with a really good looking sandwich. Well, I said, we're, all, we're always very hungry. I saw that sandwich. I said, that looks good. And he's like, hey, you want a bite? But if you're looking for airborne affection with no sandwich available, there is now a solution. Will Scully Power and Maya started dating after they exchanged contact information on a flight back to Australia. Just this January, they launched a website, wemetonaplane.com, to help people search for those flying flings that never quite were. They've had more than 300,000 hits on their website in just the last few months and can't wait to send their first couple to the altar. Derek Walker got there in style. They just kind of looked at me and they said, it's a go. So I was like, all right, it's showtime. For Derek, the love boat has nothing on the love plane. On a flight from Salt Lake City to Phoenix with his girlfriend Amanda and his whole family on board to help, he launched Operation Plane Proposal. His mother convinced the crew. Yeah, they were very enthusiastic about it. They're like, oh, sweet, yeah, let's do it. Liven things up around here. Excuse me, we have a special announcement. My heart was pounding. It was one of those things that so many pieces had to fall into place for it to really work out perfectly. Then it comes. I'll mount the halls, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you, Mary. I just was completely shocked. And once I heard Mary, I was just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it felt like I was in a dream. It was crazy. People, people were, were clapping and cheering. It was like a stadium in there. Air travel must have a whole new meaning for you now. It's true. It really does, yep. Every time an announcement starts, you're gonna be like, what's this? Yeah. <laughs> I always think it's about me now. <laughs> so much high altitude drama, you get the sense their actual wedding on the ground was a bit overshadowed. But nothing out of the ordinary. Very it was normal. Was it a good day though? <laughs> the greatest day of your life, I hope. Of course it was of course it was the greatest day of my life. Also if you're seated in rows eight or nine. Ben Bostick and Laura Zick can easily point to the greatest day in their lives, which was nearly their last. It began on the tarmac at New York's LaGuardia Airport. Ben, in seat 20A, noticed Laura walk onto the plane. Something went ding over his head, and it wasn't the call button. Well, I'm thinking she's really attractive. I'd, it'd be nice if she could sit beside me. She didn't. She was in 17D. Did you notice him at all? Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. I was very preoccupied. Soon, they would both be preoccupied. The date was January 15, 2009. The flight was U.S. Air 1549 to Charlotte. The pilot, Captain Chesley Sullenberger. It's returning back towards LaGuardia. Just after takeoff, the plane hit a flock of geese. I looked out the window and the left engine was on fire. And my first thoughts were, this is not happening. And I knew I was no longer in control, so I became calm and basically was ready to die. We're going to be nice. And into the Hudson they went, brought down safely by Captain Sully. After impact, they both managed to struggle their way out. Here's Laura on a life raft. The images now an iconic part of history. They would not see each other again that day. They would not see each other for another six months. It happened at a reunion of fellow passengers. They were introduced by a mutual friend who said, Have you met Laura? And I said no, but I was checking her out on the plane. And, you know, kind of joking, trying to break the ice. And I just kind of laughed it off, but then I was like, wait a minute, what, what did you say? <laughs> They ended up talking all night, and soon, a romance took flight. We feel very lucky that we didn't have to deal with all of, you know, the drama of some relationships. Well, there was a little bit of drama there, though, wasn't there? But it had nothing to do with our relationship. Yeah. It had to do with yeah. sorting out things and the plane crash and everything. They say the crash landing made them not just a better couple than they would have been, but better people. Every night before bed, they always take time to dance. What are some of the songs you like to dance to? Dave Matthews, Crash. Crash <laughs> Is that a joke? <laughs> we kind of made jokes as passengers about crashing. 
we're happy we survived and we got a bonus. I mean, we met each other because of it. That's quite a bonus and quite a sense of humor from our couple. And that's our program for tonight.